Championship today on 365 Sports. So the schedule, and Mac Rhodes mentioned this, but the schedule is out. And there's different ways for us to look at this. Let's first of all look at not the schedules, but kind of the philosophy here. From Greg Rubel, who's, of course, part of the Brigham Young uh, radio broadcast. The scheduling matrix during the first four years Everybody will play one another at least once, home and away. Some matchups will occur over three seasons, while others will take place all four. Matchups in 2024 that were also played in 23 will not repeat at the same site. The conference looked into maintaining the 5-4-4-5 home and away rotation to all 16 members to minimize non-conference scheduling disruptions. Other important factors, balancing annual travel by distance, time zones, as well as maintaining connectivity to rivalries without compromising a balanced rotation for all teams. They, they got it done. It took a while, but they got it done. So let's look at the schedule. We'll, we'll kind of discuss it uh, along the way. First of all, this is there's four different teams listed. I don't expect you to be able to watch. If you're a TCU fan, you've already broken this down. But there you have TCU and Baylor. And then you have BYU and also Texas Tech. We're going to look at the Baylor schedule here and also some other ones individually. We'll put that up for a couple of two or three seconds and then move on. Garrett, let's go to another quadrant of teams. There's four of these foursomes. Colorado, Kansas State, Houston, and Oklahoma State. There are their schedules, along with, and it's just good to see the logos, Arizona, ASU, UCF, and Cincinnati, and then the last four, the quadrants of the schedules, Iowa State, Utah, Kansas, and also West Virginia. Let's go to the Baylor schedule, if you can, uh, and the one we mentioned here. Now, one of the things about what you'll see with Baylor, and there's already some, like, I don't know about this, one of their non-conference games is a scheduled game against Utah. It will be at Utah against the Utes, who they played this year at home in a non-conference game, even though Utah will be a part of the Big 12, that game remains the same, but it will be a non-conference schedule. I, for one, love it because now their non-conference schedule has Air Force and Utah. They open with Tarleton, and I love the fact they kept that game, although a little bit unique. Well, look, just for uh, purposes of if they had to get rid of it, then both of them now have to find a non-conference game within a year. And I think this just saves a headache for everybody. You play a non-con for one year. It's not like ever going to, you know, in the all-time conference records of the new Big 12, you know, 70 years from now, there's not going to be it's like some Utah fan and some Baylor fan fighting over who's got the better conference record because this one technically didn't count as a conference game. It's just – it's way easier for everybody else involved just to, to leave it that way. Uh, there are not – uh, very many protected rivalries, and that makes sense because there's not many rivalries that exist in this new conference, right? I mean, so, you know, there's not um, – it's kind of uh, – more teams in the Big 12 got with the treatment that Penn State did in the Big 10 in that Penn State is a Johnny – there's a newer team relatively uh, to the to the Big 10 and don't have 50-year rivalries, but BYU and Utah are going to play. Baylor and TCU are going to play. Baylor and Texas Tech. Baylor against uh, – also – Nope. Houston. Uh, uh, uh. I'm talking about the rivalries. Like yeah. those are the one be every yeah. year. Yeah. But Baylor and Tech is not going to be every yeah, year. Baylor not. and Houston's not going to be every year. Um, so Baylor and, and TCU, Utah and BYU, Arizona, Arizona State, and I believe UCF and Cincinnati are the four. No. If I'm right. No, I missed <laughs> no, that. No, it's Baylor, TCU, Arizona, Arizona State, BYU, Utah, Kansas, and Kansas State. Kansas, and Kansas that makes State. Sense. Okay, yeah. yeah, that makes sense as well. That's so, so there we are with that, Craig. Yeah, so I mean, first of all, in the Utah uh Baylor thing, I mean, not that big of a deal. If Army Navy can play non conference games when they're in the same conference, then for one year Utah and Baylor can just get that game in there and not have it be a conference game, even though it's silly. Um, it makes sense just to make things everywhere else easier on uh, the whole process. So, yeah, that'll, that'll be two conference teams playing each other. I think with all this realignment, there's going to be little hiccups like that. But in the grand scheme of things, really not that big of a deal. If it was Utah, BYU or something, I'd, I'd be like, that's, that's silly. You can't have it as a non-conference game. But I think just because that was already scheduled, because no one could have predicted that that was going to be a conference game, all right, just let that be what it is for that single season. But, yeah, like here, here's the big takeaway from this schedule. There's a massive rivalry missing that all you have to do is look at Twitter for about five seconds, and you'll see the, the 
just the madness over Iowa State and Kansas uh, mm-hmm. not being uh, in the mix, or excuse me, is it uh, Iowa State Kansas State being in the mix anymore for uh, for a, an ongoing rivalry, Farmageddon? So um, that is one that you know I think has been, as far as the backlash goes, one of the bigger ones that you've seen. Uh, you know, people very upset about um, with the uh, Iowa State Kansas State rivalry not being protected. Um, beyond that, I mean, I get that there's not a whole lot of uh, you know long term rivalries uh, in this new conference. There's some like Farmageddon that I know people are very upset about, like I said. Um, but beyond that, there's not a lot of others that you really go like, oh yeah, where's this one? Now you can say Baylor Texas Tech, like that's one that if you were going to protect rivalries on a grand grander scale, that would have made sense. Um, that's been a long you know played game. Uh, but that's now off the table. You know, the thoughts that like Baylor Houston or uh, TCU Houston or just the Texas teams would automatically play each other. That's off the table as far as these protected rivalries go. So um, it's not exactly, I think, how people thought it would be. I figured that Baylor Tech would definitely be a protected rivalry, but it's not. I thought Farmageddon would definitely be a protected rivalry, but it's not. And that's like actually on your own end bringing to a, a, a you know, in the case of Farmageddon, bringing a long historic rivalry to a close on your in, in, by your own choice, uh, really, which is, you know, I don't know how much that was thought about or, you know, worried about or, or what have you, but uh, I know that that is a sticking point for a lot of fans, especially for those two teams. 106 sure. meetings, and they started in 1917. Yeah, and now that's over because they just decided to, to not include it in the schedule. So uh, I think that's a big takeaway. And again, yeah, like not seeing Tech Baylor, that just seemed like it would be a layup, but it's not, and, and various versions of that, you know, Tech TCU or TCU Houston or whoever. Uh, so those are just a couple of my uh, initial thoughts and in looking at this. You can't please everybody. Um, there's always going to be those who want this lineup or that lineup or these protected rivalries or they feel like this should be a guarantee. So again, it's never going to make everybody happy. But the farm again thing is puzzling. I'm sure there's an explanation as to why the Texas versus Texas schools things not that all, all that puzzling because when you have so many teams, you're going to have to have games somewhere. You can't just you know make it a layup for the Texas schools to all just play each other. As they said, they've got to have geographical you know, balance uh, in, in there. So um, I get that more than I get the Farmageddon thing. But, you know, it's it's cool to get a look at. It. It's a lot to unpack. And uh, I know that there's going to be a lot of unpacking going on here over the next few hours. The quadrants that I put up, and this is uh, for, let's always, see. Always, always. Sorry. For Stan, we weren't suggesting each of those teams that were listed as far as the logos were a part of any quadrant. There is no quadrant. It's 16 teams. We gave the schedules because it's almost impossible, and it probably was a little bit more than everyone could digest, but we just put them up in images as the Big 12 did when they released the schedule earlier today. So, do you like it? Overall, yes, I hate the fact that Kansas State and Iowa State, that rivalry year in and year out now, Basically, since 2000, whoa, 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 2000 and what? I said 2007. No, what am I thinking here? Since 1917, and here we are well over 100 years later, will end. Uh, the Texas Tech and Baylor rivalry that's been going back since uh, the days of even the Southwest Conference and then the Big 12. I hate that that will end because they've been in the same division, among others. But you can't keep everything, even though I'm sure they tried. But they had to also, what I like about it is they wanted to make sure that there was no unevenness when it comes to the schedule and something had to give. Well, and look, four years from now, they might figure out a different model to to make sure that you get farm again or you create. The other thing is you can maybe make some more. If you have four straight, like say Colorado and Texas Tech in the, in the two times that they play, those games become super epic. And they're like, well, we'd like to have that one all the time. Like maybe you can throw that in there. You can throw farm again back. You can, you can do different things that make it, that that change it. This is not the forever schedule. It's the four year schedule. But they made sure that some of the things were protected uh, for the four years. But it's it's hard in, the, in these new conferences. Uh, and and I think you do need to learn the lesson of the of the Pac twelve and in Colorado, where the Pac twelve tried to make Colorado and Oregon this rival, and they just did not care about each other. They, they, you know, you'd be like, hey, it's a big rivalry showdown between Colorado and Oregon, the first two legal weed states, and you're like, ah. Eh, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like there, there was just nothing there. I'm just so glad you, the damn schedule's out. To yeah. Be with so you, you can't just tell Arizona State, like, guess what? You guys hate West Virginia now. Yeah. And you're like, do we? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's um, 
it's a batch of just random things thrown together in a way. I mean, when you look at the uh, the makeup of the way it's all changed over the last few years, so yeah, there's not going to be a ton of long established rivalries, but it is interesting to throw to the wayside one that's been a long standing rivalry for over a hundred years, and just to bring that to an end willingly. Um, I like I said, I'm sure there's an algorithm or a reason as to why you can't have it perfect. I'm not going to just defend the Big Twelve Conference, though. I'm, I'm you know, I, they think they are capable of making mistakes, and maybe that was one. Uh, we'll see over time, but yeah, there's only so much you can do with 16 teams, and um, you know, all the the part of the maps that you're spreading out over now. So um, this is realignment. This is a realignment schedule. This is not playing everybody. This is not even playing your rivals every year necessarily. Uh, this is all those things and then, and then some and then a lot more travel probably along the way, but trying the best you can to limit that. So, you know, I don't know what the rush was to get this out now. I, I think just, I guess, let everybody kind of get set up for next year. But as we've seen, these things can get crumpled up and thrown in the trash um, months later. Um, you know, I don't know if that'll be the case here or not. And if it were to happen, maybe that's how you get Farmageddon back or something like that. But for now, this is what it is and what it will likely be. And so, yeah, for better or worse, I mean, there will be people that like it. There will be people that don't. Uh, like we said at the very beginning, you can't please everybody, but it is good to just get an idea of what the future of the Big 12 is going to look like. And it's going to be different for everybody, for every team involved. But uh, it definitely has the makings to be interesting. And look, you go and create some new rivalries, and they're probably in need of that anyways. You can't manufacture 100 years of history um, you know, in just overnight. So you hope that maybe some of these that you put together uh, – some bad blood or just a great game turns this into, you know, a situation where suddenly Arizona and Texas Tech, you know, do become a rivalry in the future. But uh, time will tell on that. During the four years, all teams will play one another at least once home and away. That has not always been the case with many other conferences. That is important. So at least it's not like an eight-year gap where you don't play somebody that is a part of your 16-team conference. When they started to expand and add teams – just like other conferences you're going to have, even like the Big 12 had, they're going to have rivalries that go by the wayside. In the Wichita Eagle, Kelly Robinet had the story, and the title of the story was Big 12 Fails to Protect Some of Its Oldest Football Rivalries and New Scheduling Model. And that's, I get it, out of Wichita, Kansas, or I get it out of Ames, Iowa, or Des Moines, or places like that since it began back in 1917.